welcome back to Star Soaps channel. How are you today? I'm doing good. <laughs> today I'm going to be making avocado soap inspired by my awesome Canadian soapy sister Lori Ann Wilson. Hi Lori. <laughs> so Lori sent me recently one of every single soap that she makes in her collection. So if you want to see that video, I'll leave a link below and you can see me opening up my huge soapy love gift from Ms. Lori. And in there, like I say, there was a really cool avocado soap with real avocado in it and she'd done a really cool like pit and it just really inspired me and I wanted to make an avocado soap. So I started off by making some little avocado toppers. And then I went ahead and I made avocado soap. So come along with me and I'll show you how to make it. Squee! Okay. So here we have our cooled lye water, we have some avocado puree mixed with olive oil in this jug, and our cooled oils. We also have some lovely dark green mica here mixed into a little bit of olive oil, and I'm going to be swirling that in with the avocado puree portion of the soap. And I'm also going to be scenting all of this in avocado and mint fragrance. And I got that from Zen Designs. These inspired the whole project. These are my tiny little avocado toppers. Aren't they adorable? I spent quite a lot of time on them and I love them. <laughs> so let's go ahead and make some soap. Can't forget the pit. This is going to represent the avocado pit. And as I have learned, it should have been larger. But that's cool. This is how we learn. And I really didn't want to make a real big fat pit. It was a last minute decision. And I just had some brown soap dough. So I rolled it out into that log. But in the future, I would probably make either big round balls to place at each cut. Or a wider soap log in the future. The thing about adding a really big embed into your soap is that you will need a lot less soap in the final thing, if you know what I mean. Gloves on, very important. <laughs> yeah, so because you'll be putting in a larger embed, you'll need less of your wet soap to fill in the mould and you'll end up with soap left over that you have to put in another mould or something like that. And you'll see in this little project the same thing happened to me part because of the added avocado puree which increased the volume but also because of that soap log I ended up with a lot of extra soap and I ended up having to get a little bit creative with that and stay tuned and you'll see exactly what I do so now that I've brought my soap to a light trace or just emulsification I'm going to pour some off into the jug with the avocado in there and mix it all together until it's a nice creamy consistency. Avocado is a wonderful additive in soap. I like to add puree of different produce wherever I can. So if you want to see other soaps where I've added produce, I'll leave a link below to my recent pumpkin chai video. I always add pureed pumpkin into that one. This is my first time working with avocado and I can say I will definitely make avocado soap again. I think in the future I will make, I'll, I'll use a lot more avocado, I'll make a lot more of the soap with the avocado and I probably won't try to do the design that I do this time. So I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to give it away. So I'm going to go ahead now and pour a little bit of the avocado soap in with that beautiful green mica that I showed you and then mix that. That's going to create a darker shade of green and that way I'll get a beautiful swirl between the dark and the light avocado-y green. I really love how that comes out. That is a beautiful color of mica. It's a dark forest green with like little tiny gold sparkly sort of thing going on as well. <laughs> so it sort of has forest green and then sparkly golden top parts. 
love it so I'm adding a little bit more of the plain soap into the jug with the avocado now and as you can see that avocado and mint fragrance oil caused things to thicken up on me a little bit so I realize now I need to act fast so I'm going to go ahead and give it all a really good mix whenever your soap starts getting thick on you just get your spatula in there and keep giving it a mix to loosen it up okay so don't to panic it's not going to turn to rock in the jug you just have to work with it so this last jug that I'm adding the last of the soap into has a bunch of dark brown oxide in it and also it has vitamin powder so it's going to be a vitamin infused part of the soap and design wise it's going to be the brown so it's going to represent the outside part of the avocado it's actually taking on more of a red color than I originally thought it would or had planned so I'm going to add a little bit of titanium dioxide and that's going to bring it down to more of a sort of a walnut brown the, t the kind of tone that I'm trying to go for and that little bit of soap that's left is going to get a little bit, to, a little bit of titanium dioxide in it as well getting tongue tied there sorry <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and mix all that up and then it's going to be ready to get it in the mould So now that everything's ready to go, I'm going to start putting it into the mould. I'm going to start with this brown jug where I put the vitamin powder, the brown oxide, the titanium dioxide and the soap. And I'm going to sort of try to use it like paint and paint the walls and the floor of the mould. The idea being that like in my Cherry Moya soap, I will get this whole outer layer and then the green soap will be the centre. Just like if you cut an avocado in half and you quite clearly see the dark outside and then the green and then of course the pith right in the centre. So I'm fluffing around here. It's taken me quite a while and what I'm finding is that I'm getting a good layer on the very bottom but trying to get a decent layer on the walls of my mould is difficult. It keeps trying to run back down and it's not really working out how I planned. If I had sort of split my lye solution into some different portions and then only made up just enough soap to coat the walls first then I could have taken more time but as the case is that I've made all the soap up and it's thickening up on me I'm just gonna have to go ahead and get working so the dark green goes in with the light green and gets a little bit of a mix for an in the pot swirl before I start to plop it all in the mold whoops a little bit of a spill there gotta catch that 
and I'm just going to keep on loading it up until I'm about halfway full and then I can add my embed into there and then cover it up. Now like I talked about before, this embed is supposed to represent the pit right in the center of the avocado, but size wise it's not exact, so it's not really how I would do it again in the future. I would either leave that part out altogether and just do green soap, or I would make a much bigger, fatter soap log to represent the pit, because as you know when you cut an avocado in half, the pit is large and it takes up a big section in the middle and in my final soap that is not what we have. So I'm giving it all a bang down and what happens when I bang my mold is that the silicone liner can tend to bow in a little bit on the side. So I'm going back after I've given it a good bang and just trying to straighten that back out again because we don't want our final soap to have a bow in it. Then I'll scrapey scrapey the last of that beautiful avocado soap out of the jug and just kind of use my skewer to help it settle in to the mold because we don't want big blops sticking up. We want it all to be fairly flat and I don't want to bang it anymore if I can help it because it's going to keep on making that side bow in and I have to keep pulling it out. But whenever you do an embed, you do want to give it a really good bang because you want to make sure there's no air pockets around it. You want to make sure it's got soap underneath and soap over the top. So the stage I'm doing now is to cover it all up so that once again our final soap will have that brown going all the way around it. That's the plan anyway, just like an avocado would. Of course my bars of soap are just going to be rectangle shaped. They're not going to be shaped like avocado. But the idea behind all this was to try to get that design to look just like a section of avocado but what's happened is I've ended up with a lot more soap than I bargained for. So I've loaded it into a piping bag with a plain round tip. And I'm just going to go ahead and dollop it all along the top. I don't do piped tops very often, but the more that I thought about this, the more it made sense because of how tiny those little avocado toppers are. They are going to need a good bed of soap to rest in. If I lay them flat on their back, then you would only see one side of it. And if I lay it face down, you wouldn't see the little pit that I put in. And if I tried to put it on the side, then half of it was going to get lost in the soap. And it was a real tricky one for me. So I thought, pipe it up, give it a really high peak, and then each little avocado can be rested right on the very top on a slight angle so that hopefully you will be able to see every side of it because I put a lot of effort into them and the way that I learned how to make them was I just looked up how to make an avocado out of polymer clay and I watched some videos on YouTube and they inspired me and then I made my toppers. So I'm coming in now at a different angle so you can see just how tall that top is because I really did pile it up guys and that shows you just how much soap I ended up with extra to the volume of my mold just because I added in that little bit of avocado puree and that embed. So that's quite a lot of extra soap. I probably could have made two or three soaps in an individual cavity mold with that extra or like you can see I've done, I could pipe it up the top and make a really beautiful pipe top. It means your final soap is even bigger as well and weighs more, so that's an added bonus. Now I'm just coming through with those little avocado toppers and I'm trying to rest them either on the very top of a dollop or in between two dollops depending on where I will be cutting the bar. So if you look carefully on the side of my mold, you'll see some little black markings. They're there to show me an idea of exactly where I'll be cutting for each bar to be the same. Now one of my little pits fell out and I had to get the skewer and carefully poke it back in with the help of a little bit of wet soap like glue and it's gone back in there really well. So I'm going to go ahead now and finish putting them on. And what I realize as I'm going along putting on my toppers is that I'm touching them and the mica is rubbing off. So I have to come back with a paintbrush and retouch the little mica detail on it as well. <laughs>
So we're back again later on that night and it has got hard enough. I popped it out of the mold and then painted all the way around the outside of it with mocha mica to try to give it a really brown outer edge. And here is our final design. I absolutely love how the green and green soap look. I'm not very happy with the brown around the outside. I'll probably give that a miss in the future. I love how my little topper looks on the very top. The piping is a combination of that white soap that you saw and the brown soap. So some bars, it looks like it's got cream on the top, which sort of doesn't fit with the design. But you can see this beautiful little topper on the very top, what inspired it all in the first place. And of course, I was also inspired by Miss Laurie-Anne. And then even more recently, a friend of mine in Canada, Jennifer, also made an avocado soap. So there must be something in the water, guys. We're all on an avocado kick at the moment. I love it. I love to eat avocados as well, so it was really difficult for me to give up this avocado to go into the soap, but I'm really glad that I did it because it is a super creamy soap. It's just dreamy. I really love it. I don't think I'll bother with that fragrance oil again, the avocado and mint fragrance oil. It wasn't amazing. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't amazing. I think in the future I might just stick with the mint part of it and just have a mint soap or something like that. Even leave it plain and unscented, that's fine too. I just don't think I'd bother buying that fragrance especially like I did for this one. I used that whole bottle, it was a 25ml bottle, and I used it all up in about 700ml of oil that got made into probably about 900ml, just short of a kg of soap. And that's what I'm cutting into bars now. I do like that pit look. I just wish it was a bit bigger, and I like the shade of brown that that pit is. It would be nice if the outside of it was that shade of brown as well. Instead, it's more of a sort of a creamy brown color, but that's okay too. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with how this soap turned out. It's not 100% how I had envisioned. It has extra things that I hadn't thought of, and I kind of like that too. <laughs> So I know what I'd do differently in the future. I'm definitely going to make avocado soap again. It's just going to be a little different. I hope you enjoyed watching me make it like this and make it this time. And if you want to see more videos that are like this, then please hit that subscribe button down below. Become a member of the Star Soaps family and feel the soapy love. Don't forget to ring the notification bell. That way you'll get a little notification every time I upload a cool new video like this one. And you can come along and join in. Well, I love you guys. I really am excited that we're getting so close to 6,000 subscribers. And when we do, we're going to do a big fat giveaway. And that's going to be awesome. All right, well, thanks again for watching, guys. And I'll see you next week. Bye.